What is going on my friends? Welcome to the Cayman Island series with me ancient. Check out his channel in the description below and we are going to snorkel this afternoon and see what we can catch on the reef to eat. Grab this. We also might go out in the kayak later. We'll see but we're going to scout underwater and I like the idea of scouting underwater and then going in the kayak and fishing some of the spots we scout later. So, right away, I came across a big conch shell. But you can see right there, it's already been harvested by somebody. Somebody's broken it open. That's the hole there. And uh, when I flipped it over, sure enough, it's deteriorating quickly. But then I found another conch in the sandy area. And this one had a live snail in it. Uh, that is what a conch is, by the way, just a sea snail. So we decided to keep and harvest that one. Now, it is a little on the small side compared to what you can catch. And then my dad found another one, a little bit bigger, and put that in there. So within minutes of being in the water, we already had two conch. And then I found this one, flipped it over, and sure enough, you see the snail in there. And this was a lot bigger one. So what we decided to do is cull out one of the smaller ones and put the big one in. So that was cool, like being out there like five minutes and already getting two conch, which I think is the limit. You're each just allowed one. This big anchor was pretty cool. In fact, it was huge. And if I had a big boat, I might consider hauling it back to the beach and cleaning it up. But uh, I don't own a boat here, so I just left it. But that was pretty cool. Then we started looking around for lobster. And you see, whatever this thing is laying on the bottom, I don't know if it's something from a ship or something like that. There are wrecks and stuff around here. But we went and looked in all the holes and all the caves and ledges. And when I was looking under one, check out this beautiful little, like, aquarium fish. I've never seen one like this snorkeling. I have to imagine there is at least one aquarium fish enthusiast watching right now. Uh, if you know what that is, please let me know in the comments. That was really cool. And this is what we're looking for right here, folks. Lobster in little caves and under the ledges and stuff like that. This is a tiny one, so we just left them. But while looking around under the ledges, check out this stonefish that I came across. This is one of the most poisonous or venomous fish. I'm not sure if, you, if their top spines have poison them. Does that make them poisonous or venomous? Anyway, extremely dangerous fish. You do not want to step on that. Rumor is that they're lethal, but I'm not sure that anybody's actually died from them, but they are one of the most horrific fish to ever get stung by. And so that was a little worrisome seeing one of those out there. Um, and then into this hole here, my dad saw something moving around so he was poking at it and then I thought why not just flip the rock over let's see what's under there and we were not disappointed when the dust cleared there was a big worm under the rock and a couple of years ago I came across a worm snorkeling kind of poked at it and my comment section lit up with people telling me it was a fire bristle worm and this looks very similar to that. I think it's just a big fire bristle worm and the reason why they're called that is apparently they have these bristles on them that if you get stung it stings like fire. So that was a cool find. I believe that's the same type of worm uh, that I saw a couple of years ago. And then check this out. There are a couple of like crawdad looking crustaceans under the rock too. When the rock flipped back over in the current I saw them, and check out one right here. It looks, it looks like a like a saltwater crawfish. Or that might be, that looks like some sort of shrimp. It was like black. So that was pretty cool. Never know where you're going to find flipping over rocks. Wonder what's under this big brain coral here. This was really cool. Look at the gorgeous patterns on this. It's called a brain coral. Really, really neat. Didn't want to disturb it, though. And then while we were swimming around, I couldn't help but look up and check out this beautiful villa right on the beach. Can you imagine living there? Gosh, that was so cool. Like you have your own little private beach right on the water, snorkeling and fishing right out your front door. I just thought that was a uh, dreamy looking place to live. And here's a squirrel fish just out and about. It's interesting how the squirrel fish in the Caribbean have no problem being out in the middle of the day and that the squirrel fish in Hawaii are like strictly nocturnal. I thought that was kind of interesting. And here's what we're after. 
three lobster under this ledge. Now, lobster have to be have a six inch tail here, and none of these looked like they had a six inch tail, so we just left them. But uh, gonna keep looking for some keepers. There's a big barracuda swimming by. He didn't get real close, but that was cool seeing a big old barracuda. And then here's another big house right on the water as we swam down the beach a ways. There were quite a few just stunning villas looking out over the beach. I just thought it'd be amazing to live in a location like that. Good snorkeling too. And then this was something brand new. I've never seen a lionfish while snorkeling before. <laughs> I find this little micro one. Again, aquarium size. Really, really neat. But in hindsight, I wonder if I should have like just crushed him real quick because lionfish have a bounty on them. They don't like them at all. And I can't imagine somebody stepping on that, which would be very possible. And speaking of aquarium fish, check out this little blue one. This is something brand new as well. Blue fish with little blue spots on it. I thought that was amazing. But then that other blue fish come swimming in the background and look how they're swimming really close to each other. And it occurred to me, I wonder if that is the baby of the blue fish in the background. Now you might say, well, they look so different, but in the fish world, a lot of times the babies do look way different than the adults and they can be born with like little spots on them or stripes and then they lose the spots or stripes as they get older. So I wonder if that was just a baby of that cool blue fish in the background. So that was pretty neat. And in the back of this cave, there's just like a lone barbershop shrimp chilling, which I think are so cool. And I wonder if barbershop shrimp don't taste good or they're poisonous or they blend in or something like that. Because I've noticed that barbershop shrimp hang out with fish and the fish don't seem to want to eat them. I found this really cool bottle as well. It just seemed like a really Caribbean thing to bring back a bottle. I decided to grab one of them. And then check out this school of fish. The locals call them sprats, I believe, and they would hang out on this point. And I learned over the next few days that this was a popular fishing spot I was swimming through because the sprats hang out here all the time and the big fish come around to eat them. So locals would come down almost every evening and fish in this area. So that was kind of cool to swim through. Overall, just a great snorkel session. And I got a bottle, I'll assume it's a, it's a rum bottle, a Caribbean rum bottle, as kind of a souvenir. All right, my friends. Very, oh, where did he go? Or did he withdraw way up in there? That one I can still, well, what the, hey. Whoa, really? Oh, wait, I see him. He's just way back in there. Isn't that beautiful, though? Look, you have two totally different, like, colors going on there. That's cool. I've cleaned these one other time in another video, and uh, it didn't go well. <laughs> you can't just break these apart. Like, you just break t the shell totally, because once a conch shell is broken, no other conch, like, get in there. Like, they make their own shell. And so it just becomes a beautiful shell afterwards. So you can either just smash it to pieces, but I'm gonna try the like expert Caribbean way. And, oh my, it's gonna be loud. Oh, I can feel some squishiness in there. So that helps detach them. All right, that like loosens the suction. You just gotta loosen that little feller up in there. He's, I can feel his foot in there. That's what, crazy. This is, this dude's hard. Yeah, that's why one guy said I never mess with this. He said I just bust the shells open. That's such a beautiful shell. It is. All right, we're gonna take out, get out the big guns here. And uh, this guy's just too big. Put the steps back when we're done. What the? Oh, oh my gosh. The concrete broke. And the shell is like oh barely. Goodness. What the? Whoa. Oh my goodness. I don't I didn't know they were I didn't know they were that strong. <laughs> well I'm gonna have to replace the concrete step. Uh we'll go to plan C. Alright. 
right. Oh, man. Maybe this will be big enough. Hopefully. Unless this rock is going to break. Are you, kidding, Are you me? kidding me? I cannot believe it. Try it again. I mean, I don't know what else to do. Oh, at least he, he look, he's in the top. Oh, he's in the go. top. So he's in there. I think I'm just going to have to hit it again, though. Yeah. There. Finally. There we go. That is a really big size cone. Oh, look, those are like his eyes. I just realized that. Goodness. Look, those are like his two eyes. That's, that is a snail, isn't it? Uh huh. Wow. Now, okay, one, now this, okay, I recognize this clear thing. One dude ate that. He was a Caribbean guy. He ate it raw. So I don't, I'm not going to do that, but he literally pinched it off and ate it raw on a oh. YouTube video. That was a lot of work. There we go. It's a little smashed up, but doesn't look like much of a snail, but that is 100% a snail right there. That's going to be some good meat on that. Mm-hmm. All right, let's try this one. This rock better do it on the first. There we go. That one is easier. There is currently nowhere in the U.S. where conch is uh, legal to keep, so we had to come here. Now that's interesting, so that's what I pulled out, but I can also see inside there, look, I missed some stuff as well. I wonder if people who cleaned them in that one method, so. yeah, they leave some. In this case, I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to bump the rest of him with... That literally did nothing. There. Oh. I just cannot believe the toughness of the shell. There you go. See, there's some meat right in there. Now, whether or not we eat that piece or just use it for bait, conch is fantastic bait. So I actually might just use that piece for bait later. Yeah, see, there are the guts right there. We'll use that for bait later, and then we'll eat this. Amazing uh, size difference between the two, but there we go. A good snorkeling day's work. All right, my friends, what we're gonna do now is cook the conch before we get out fishing, because I wanna eat it while it's fresh, and I wanna use part of it as bait. Let's see, we're gonna make plenty of room on the cutting board here, so there's our snail. Doesn't look the most appetizing at the moment. You kinda of have to clean it. Wow, look at the snail size difference there. Wow, I mean, one is ginormous. And then... All right, so to clean these, now that we have them out of the shell, this right here is guts, so we're going to cut that off. And this makes excellent snapper bait. In fact, I just talked to a local yesterday who was telling me to use the guts of, a, of any kind of conch or sea snail. It's good stuff. And then we want to cut off any black flesh. I can't believe how much bigger that one is. Uh, <laughs> that is crazy. And then we're going to cut off its little... Uh, shell or whatever that hook, the hook part foot? there little foot yes foot all right you see the white meat that is what we're going to eat and you see the skin around the outside we got to cut that away because the skin is super tough reminds me of an octopus yes yes very tough and uh, there's no exact process to it that i at least in the videos that i've seen you just got to kind of chip away at it all right guys so you see the uh, meat pile difference this is the bait and this is just the white flesh. So, yeah, this is gonna be amazing. We'll take this somewhere, maybe out on the kayak. Fish with it, it just smells really strong. It really, I, yeah. I, I can smell, I mean, it's, it is strong, that's cool. It's super strong seafood, so it's gonna be amazing bait. Now, snail, sea snail is very tough, my friends. So what I'm gonna do is make a bunch of cuts in it. That'll help tenderize it. And this, same thing with this piece here. That's very thin, so we'll be able to pound that very easily. There's lots of little cuts to help tenderize, because it is, it is like octopus. Now what I'm gonna do is take the knife blade out. I'm gonna use this as kind of a hammer. All right, there we go. I think that is going to be very, very tender. So let's make a little batter. Now, a lot of people make conch fritters. In fact, when we start to type in conch 
fritters is like the next word that comes up. So I'm gonna use a batter instead of just a dry deal here. Pour a little water with it. Then I'm gonna use some of my first cast seasoning. Now, the first time I made this, I added salt to the mixture and we learned that conch is already very naturally salty and it made them way over salty. So this time we are going to leave the salt out of the batter mixture. Definitely gonna need some more water. Batter has set. Let's put our conch in there and roll it around. Everything has a really nice fragrance to it. Not, it's hot enough. Just drop in little nuggets at a time. Little strips and nuggets in there. Yeah, I think this is going to be very tender based on how much <laughs> I beat it. Oh, one thing I forgot. I cannot believe it. I uh, cut up some onions. I'm not used to doing this, but I saw a lady do it in a YouTube video, a cooking video. I thought, oh, that's a good idea. She added some of this to her batter. So I'm going to do the same thing. A little green onions? Green onions and onions that I chopped up. Mm. And she put it right in with her batter, and I thought, that is a great idea for a little flavor burst. Let's put the rest of this conch in there. Cut up into nice little chunks. Kind of pounded to death. You just beat the devil out of it. Yeah, that should be add a fun, fun flavor. He's a little flip a do there. Does it take very long to cook those? Not very long at all. All right, so there is a Caribbean conch salad where they like chop up all these vegetables really fine, and then you actually soak the conch in lemon juice for 24 hours, and that cooks it, and then you chop that up real fine, and then combine them all together. And I wasn't brave enough this time to do that with my sea snail. And besides, I like the idea of this snail getting like, like really hot cooked instead of just cooked in lemon juice. So I've made this kind of salad. So we'll basically make a, an American, shall we say, conch salad here with it. But so I'm taking the, the general idea of a conch salad and just putting my own uh, twist on it. But this is not the official, by any means, Caribbean conch salad. Now I just, that looks good to me. I don't know about you. Let's put a little, uh, little uh, dressing. Oh, I'll put that on the side. Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll drizzle it on the side and I'll kind of miss most of the conch. So that way we get the good flavor of just the seafood. You know, we kind of mostly miss it there. And then we'll add a few sunflower seeds to it. I've already salted and peppered the tomatoes. There we go. Looks like fun. All right, let's uh, put these last few pieces on here. I love, this is, we basically made conch nuggets. <laughs> I love chicken nuggets. Don't see why that wouldn't be just amazing. Wow. All right, so that's gonna be a nice a little meal. Um, all right, Pops, you wanna give this a shot? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so here's a question. Do you dip conch in any kind of sauce? Or do you just eat it regular? Like, some of fish is really good with ketchup. Or yeah, I think this is sauce. really good the way it is. All right, we'll eat it. We'll eat it like this, but maybe in the future, make some yeah. sauce with it. So. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this day and the time to be together eating. And I ask you to bless this food to our bodies now. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Sweet. Mm. Thank you for helping me out there. Oh, that was my pleasure. Cheers. That is good. And, I, and you left out the salt this time. That was good. That one. First cast seasoning. Conch is so has such a powerful. Punch. It is. It's a strong, strong flavored mm -hmm. creature. That it just yeah. Keeps that is, on giving. It keeps on yeah. There's there's no uh, weak flavor no. in that. I'm gonna try it with the old salad. A little lettuce on there. Yeah, try that. No. What do you think of that? That crisp cold lettuce with that conch, crisp conch. That is, wow. So you take the strong flavored fried conch, make a little lettuce wrap out of it. Mm. That's the Cold and crispy lettuce. Wow. That is a good, good way to have it right there. This, this is this is so much fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just go right out front, find a couple. And they're easy to catch. A little hard to clean. <laughs> a little hard to clean, yeah. That. Cleaning them is way harder than catching them. Big success. Well, my friends, now we have a bunch of bait. Mm. Let's go out and let's fish. Mm -hmm.
Oh, another beautiful day. All right, my friends. We are all set up to go kayak fishing here. This is a rental. It's actually a Jackson kayak, which is like a super nice kayak. And I'm surprised. It's actually it's the best rental I've ever gotten. I've got this one. All right, my friends, I've got a little tiny chartreuse jig head, and I'm just gonna tip it with a little bit of that conch. That conch smells delicious. Mmm. I could smell it from here when you open the bag. We've kept it frozen. Just take off a little chunk. There we go, and just drop that down right over the reef. We're gonna see how many fish we can catch. All right, first cast of the day. Fish on. Fish on? Yes, nice. First one of the day. Some. Oh, it's like one of those jack types. Guys, interestingly enough, in uh, Cayman Islands, almost all the fish have to be eight inches to keep. That's just the rule. It's just like that straight up rule. He's a wiggly bugger. Yeah, it's like kind of a jack type thing. Now, should we keep it or should we wait till we get something bigger? Yeah, wait, wait till we get something bigger. Sounds good. Beautiful right. fish, though. Oh. Whoa! Big old wave. Woo. <laughs> We're over the shallow stuff where the waves are raining. You guys can see how shallow it is right there. Oh yeah, we need to get out of this. Woo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a little too much excitement. Woo. Wow. Yeah, that was a. Intense. Don't get over the shallow reef, folks. The wind pushed us right over. That is super weird, guys. The current's just sucking us out to sea. Yeah, this is a dangerous day to snorkel. Got him. Fish on. Fish on. He just took it. Nice. What happens with this one? All right. Another jack. Another small one, but cool. It's like Cayman's version of a papillo. Nice, another small one, so we'll let him go. Hey yeah, guys, I have a fishing reel that's kind of on its last legs. Um, it's been used a lot, been soaked in a lot of salt water, and it's just freezes up now. Let's get it right by the rocks here, folks. So I catch us a big old snapper. All these waves and wind is difficult to deal with, but... Oh, is that a turtle? Yeah, it was a turtle right there. It's his fin poked out of the water. Oh, I just had one. Dang it. Got him. Fish on. Oh, a snap. Nope, it's a grunt. Thought it might be a schoolmaster snapper. Wouldn't be big enough anyway, even if it was a snapper. There we go, pretty fish. Called a red mouth grunt. He has little teeth, so I don't want to stick my fingers in there to show you guys, but he has a red mouth. <laughs> Got him. Yes. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, he's small. You got something different though. Oh, it's a red. Oh, cool. Whoa, big wave. Red squirrel fish, I think. That's, that was the ones in the, those are the ones in the supermarket, right, Pops? Yeah. That they had for they sale to eat. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, obviously they were bigger than this guy's, but. Oh. Gone. <laughs> Conk is highly effective, my friends, but it does come off the hook a little easy. But as far as smell and flavor goes, I give it a 10 out of 10. Well, my friends, uh, it's been fun. Lost all the big fish, landed all the small ones. So we're still on the hunt for that tasty ocean seafood feast. Um, we're gonna go in and figure out what we're gonna do next. This is the thing. Let's investigate here. Boy, this driving on the left-hand side of the road thing is uh, really whacking me out here. This spot looks cool. You know, I'm just gonna fish along the side of the road for the rest of the evening, not, not on the side of the road. I'm just going though to move down 
this side of the coast and just fish at a couple little spots along here before the sun goes down. See if I can get kind of some cliff fishing in, catch something interesting. A hot rod. Hot rod! Okay, it's just gonna be me uh, for this little venture. In fact, I need to put on proper shoes here. The rocks around here are super treacherous. Like, really, really treacherous. I don't know if it's for the whole island or just this side, but it's bad. All right, two fishing rods and way too much stuff with me. Way more than I will need, but that's the way fishing is. You gotta be prepared for everything, I say. You see, y'all check out these rocks. I mean, these are shoe eaters here. And I've, I've traveled to some places like in Hawaii, they have lava rock everywhere. And this stuff, like the way it formed or whatever, it is especially vicious. Got him. Ah, oh, small one. A sergeant fish on that, on that sizable circle hook. Gosh, I'd make a great piece of bait, but you can't keep these ones as bait. Pretty little fish. Oh, barely cleared the rocks. Okay. Well, we're catching the variety today, that's for sure. All right, so I got this pack of Ballyhoo from a previous trip. I'm just gonna cut a nice chunk off. Ugh. Another snag. I won't give up. Oh, I won't give up, my friends. At least the snag came out. I kind of envisioned myself just like catching a ton of reef fish today and having my pick of what to eat. All right, here we go. Piece of ballyhoo, chunk of ballyhoo one. Oh, 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 oh. I, nothing I can do about that. It popped out. Might as well put one more piece on. All right, last cast of asterisk. I have one. I have one, guys. Oh my gosh, I have a huge fish. I have a huge fish. I mean, something giant. Oh my gosh, is it a tarpon? Guys, I might have a tarpon on. It's a tarpon! No! No! It threw the hook! Did you see those jumps? My first tarpon! <laughs> that was last cast of the day, too! He just threw the hook! I've never caught a tarpon before. That was the perfect size for me to land, too. It was like just like three feet long. Because I can't land one of those giant, you know, seven-footers or something on this stuff. Time. Well, my friends, I gave it my all. Beautiful evening. No good fish. The fight goes on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, my friends, coming back down to the beach. We prepared the kayak. Me agent and I are going to go out this evening. I'm going to put away the tarpon fishing for now. And we're gonna go out and try to catch a lobster. We've been seeing some lobster in this patch of reef over here. So we're gonna try to catch one of those and uh, then we'll get back to the shoreline fishing. Guys, there's a ray right in front of us. There we go, that way the, the surf can't take it away. All right, my friends, we're at this new beach here, paddled up several hundred yards, and we're gonna drop in right here. Round two of lobster hunting. And really no trip is wasted though. Like even when we go out and we don't catch what we're hoping to, 
we still learn a lot, whether it's about the terrain or we just see cool things like this big puffer fish. He's not inflated, but that is a big old puffer fish. Look how big his eyes are. That is cool. I think they're one of the biggest eyed fish on the reef. And this was neat. A, I don't know what that is. This is the first time I've ever seen it. It sort of looks like a spade fish to me, but I've never seen a yellow striped spade fish before. Beautiful. And that's what I'm talking about, where every time you go out, I mean, I've been out snorkeling tons of times, and I've never seen that fish before. So that was really, really interesting. And then here, this is the second or third time I've seen this. A stingray with a fish kind of as overwatch. And I think what's going on there is the stingray is looking for food, and the fish is just there to get the leftovers. So if, like, the stingray attacks a crab or whatever, and a piece of leg flies up, the fish is there to grab it. And this is a big mutton snapper swimming along. This is one of the most desirable and delicious fish on the reef. That was definitely a keeper. I'd be trying to catch that if we were fishing. And then a flounder, a peacock flounder swimming along. Not very good to eat, but a beautiful one. And then this was something that my dad filmed. I've never seen this before. Neither one of us had seen this. It's a turtle with the remora stuck to it. And if you are wondering what a remora is, that is the fish that s sticks to sharks or whales normally. And neither one of us had seen a remora stick to a turtle though. Look, it looks like the turtle has a tail there. And you can really see it right there. The remora is just stuck to the bottom of a shell. I wonder what the turtle thinks of that. Is like the turtle annoyed? <laughs> that was just kind of cool. Never, like I say, every time you go out, you never know what you're gonna see. And then under this ledge in this really shallow area, my dad discovered a great big lobster. Definitely a keeper. Don't even have to measure this one. But there was a problem. Number one, it was super shallow and the waves were sloshing back and forth. And then when my dad went to poke it, it scooted way back in its cave. And you can actually see all the way through the other side. This was a deep ledge and there was no way we were getting that lobster out of there. He had a really good hiding spot. That's probably why he was so big. So after a while of poking at him, we just gave up. We just simply couldn't reach him. And then this was another lobster cave. And the same problem was here. You can see way back the lobster there have quite a bit of area to scoot back to. And I'm not sure these would have been keepers anyway, so we just left those, didn't even try for them, because I'm not sure that they would have been keepers. I snuck up on a fish here hiding in a cinder block, by the way, which is kind of cool. And it was a fun time out there, but just could not get any of the lobsters that we wanted. This, Like I said, the snorkel trip wasn't wasted, but just couldn't find any keepers. Woo. Beautiful evening out here. Man, but we are still lobsterless. Couldn't get the two we saw. It's kind of cool though, just exploring along here. Uh, yeah, look at that big slug in there. I had a local tell me that those are really good bait. Just crack the shell open. Yeah, this might come into play in a little bit. No problem, just sticking it in my pocket. Sweet. Got a good chunk of bait there. Look at this one here. That's a big slug. Even though his shell is small, that's a big slug in there. I'm going to put that in my pocket as well. Who knows? Might catch something on him. Look at this. This must be a bunch of babies of those slugs I just found. There's like a hatch, a slug hatch. <laughs> first time I've ever seen that. Well, my friends, we are still tarpinless, we're still lobsterless, and just overall big fishless. It's still been fun, but uh, you gotta catch something amazing to eat still, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. Everything's on the left hand side. What's well, driving on the left hand side of the road. And then the car is all backwards too. By the way, I was listening to some Tony Anderson on the way here. If you guys have never 
her Tony Anderson highly recommend it check him out on YouTube oh it's a gorgeous morning folks back here at uh, we'll call it the tarpon hole and let's see if I can get anything yeah look up Tony Anderson and I recommend the heart of man it's called the heart of man anyway let's get to some fishing ballyhoo is uh, the order of the day as well as those two snails oh my now that way oh I have to be careful yeah I'll have to be careful yeah I'll be standing on the highest part of the rocks this morning A new bag of ballyhoo, frozen. Throw that out there for chum. Woo! Look at these waves. I need to take up surfing. Good grief. Whoa! That was cold. Not really, it's actually very warm out here. All right, nothing's been working thus far, so let's give these giant snails a go. I'm guessing I just pop these open like the conch. And of course, like the conch, they're probably just insanely hard to open. Let me get a rock. The rock broke instead of the shell. Isn't that amazing? There we go. Okay, so he's got like a really hard foot, so I'm gonna like cut that part off. Ooh, it's a tough snail. It's kind of like the conch. Ugh. Tough to get on the hook. That's good. All right. Let's see if I catch anything on this. Something's nibbling the snail. You see that? Oh, shoot. Missed him. Might be a little one. I don't know. Either way, though, it's gotten a bite on the first cast. Oh, great. Big waves again. Come on. Reef fish are just tricky, man. They're just tricky. Oh, man. They're loving the snail, but I can't... Dang it. Got a snag. Snagged my snail. Shoot, it broke. Well, at least I established the sea snails work. I guess that's a good thing. I'm still learning here, man. Trying to figure all this out is proving to be challenging. You know, I need, I need this, uh, I need this coconut water. <laughs> I've never tried this before, but this is all oh, over here in the Caymans. Oh man! Well, here goes. Here's salt water in your eye. Made with real coconut pieces. I'm literally chewing on coconut. Well, now that is interesting. I like it. It's a chewy drink. Wow. Very interesting. You talk about pulp. This is pulp. Look at these waves, man. I can surf these things. It's making it kind of difficult out here. But I feel like it's the best chance of catching a big fish. They kind of like it when it's all whipped up like this. I'll just have to keep trying. Wow, this is really good. Grace coconut water. Come on, I gotta get one fish this morning. I can't have all this effort be in vain. Do I, ha I have a fish? I have a fish, guys. Hooray! Yes! That doesn't look like a very big one. But at this point, I'm happy. Sort of. It's a grunt. A grunt, a pretty fish. But tis useless to me, a red mouth grunt. Look at those pink lips. That's pretty, but not even a legal size, actually. There you go, my friend. <sighs> Last piece of bait, folks. Dang it. Well, no fishing session is completely wasted because you always learn something. But uh, the hunt for a big fish goes on. Oh yeah, look at those waves. All right, guys, uh, 
my dad and I came back out here for hopefully the evening bite. So I just put on a fresh piece of bait. Watch out, save yourselves. Woo. I hooked the tarpon probably like right about there, so. Mm -hmm. Either I have a piece of coral or I have something. Oh, piece of coral. Yes. Oh, it's soft and squishy. Ugh. Oh, it's oozing water. Some sort of spongy coral. Wonder if you could catch parrotfish on a piece of coral. So that's all they do all day, <laughs> eat coral. They take a spongy piece, take the inside of that. Got him, got him, big fish, big fish, big fish, big fish. Yes, sir. Look at a tarpon again. A tarpon. Just like last night. Look at him. Woo! Yes. All right, where am I going to land? <laughs> yeah, I'm letting him tire out. Wow. You know, I'm going to go down there because this is actually a pretty safe little corner. Oh, he just broke it off. No way. What? Oh, man. I, I don't think he, look, I'm sad. I don't think he broke, I think he just threw it. How in the heck? No, he just broke it. Golly, I have 40 pound braid and 30 pound leader. I wonder if he rubbed it against a rock or something. Yeah, take much if you rub it against a rock. Oh, man. Well, I fished hard all day. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to say, when I hooked him, it felt like a snag at first, and I wonder if the line's kind of wrapped around a bit, of, a bit of this jagged rock and put a weak spot in it, because it's not up where the hook was. It's kind of like halfway up the leader, so it must have just got wrapped around a, these jagged, jagged rocks. And... I got one. Got one. No way. Mm -hmm. It's small. It's small. It ain't a tarpon. What is it? It's a big grunt. Uh, it's a, <laughs> the consolation catch. Yeah, I was about to say let's use them for bait, but I just remembered we tried grunt in Florida as bait and they were no good for some reason. Nothing yeah, nothing wanted them. So we're just gonna throw them back, guys. I have to just keep trying, I guess. I'll take the head. If you uh, cut down just a little bit more, right there. a little bit more. Yeah, that's it. I want a nice big chunk. All right, my friends, back out here. Hopefully for the last time, we'll, we'll be walking away with a big fish. The line I had on this last time was perfectly adequate. I just wanted to put more on. So I went to the tackle store, got some super slick if you guys are familiar with the power pro brands it's kind of like the nicest braid you can get and i put on the full quantity because i felt like i only had like 100 120 yards on this i feel like a needlefish or ballyhoo or something down in the water a live one swimming i think that's what the tarpon feed on got him got a fish folks ah small one Let's see if it's something edible though what is this? This is something new. Oops. It's a tiny grouper. Oh my goodness. Look at that. If he's eight inches, he's a keeper. I think if that's a grouper, that's the first one I've ever caught from shore. Kind of knocked him against the rock. That was, uh, was a little too eager to get him in. He's like 11 or 12 inches. I say we keep him, Pops. I mean, I think we'll look them up, but I think it's just a grouper. It's like a bass. You can just hold them by the lip. I'll have to look him up, but that's kind of cool. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just set him in this. Per yeah, there's no, no really way to get out of it. A little tide pool right there. Sweet. Get him coming to the top to breathe. <laughs> that's what it looks like he's doing. Dude, you can submerge yourself. Oh, there he goes. Okay. That's cool. 
Yeah, let's get like a five or ten pound one of those. Yeah. Get a big fat group. Oh, that'd be so good. Grouper. Oh, oh, my dad's got one. Yep. Fish on. Yep, keep your rod tip high because they want to get down in those rocks. Look at a beautiful sunset bite. Whoa, a little scary on the waves there. Carol, just to let you know, there's a big wave coming to your left there. Uh, not real big, but he's the bigger one I've caught he's so a, far. <laughs> should I go down and try to land him? Uh, no, I think we should wait to see what he is. Oh it's, a, oh, it's a snapper. It's a it's a yellowtail snapper. Yes. Oh, All right, fish. Oh, a good one. Woo. That is excellent. Oh. Yellowtail snapper, my friends. That's a foot long. Yes, for sure. Yes, nice. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Right at sunset. Oh, those are so beautiful. They are. These are tasty too. Uh, if you're familiar with the Caribbean, Florida, all that, a lot of people uh, eat these whole. Yes, I had one hole in a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, just the other two. That's right. Oh, man. All right, a grouper and a snapper. Ooh, let him go in there. Whoa, oh, oh. Well, well, that may not you know, work, huh? Maybe we should throw him in the cooler. He's more lively than the... We just stick him in the cooler so he doesn't jump out. I mean, I don't think he will. It's so far from the edge, but stranger things have happened. Yeah. And we've worked so hard, so oh, yes. we'll knock him out real quick. Well, my hunger went away. I'm... Yeah, all of a sudden we're refocused. Look at that beautiful sunset, my friends. Oh, look at that. That's almost an error. They got a scale on the tip of the hook. That could cost you a fish. There we go. Oh, man, what a beautiful evening. Fish on again. I didn't even have time to bait up. My dad hooked up on another one. Wow. For being slow before. It's picked up. Another, uh, it's another snapper. Watch out, I'm gonna <laughs> another good keeping snapper. <laughs> nice job, Pops. Nice. All right, we both have Ooh. something to eat. We very got, nice. Uh, we got uh, fish out there, I think. Uh, school I, yeah, I think they do school, guys. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, yellow tail snapper school up. So I'm gonna get my line out there. Look how we went all out for tarpon with bigger leaders, bigger hooks, and now we're getting all these smaller fish. Hey. Like, explain that. We'll take it. Sweet. Yeah, I got no leader, so you just have to use it yourself. Last piece of bait, my friends. Yeah, I got a big one, big piece too. Yeah, big old chop. It's the biggest one I've ever Get a big water heifer on it. There you go. All right, my friends. Bring our fish back home. And uh, let's fillet them up. That is cool. I have to look up what that is. All right, my friends. Got here a big cutting board. Come to the corner of the beach here. And uh, let's see. It's going to be hard to find an even surface. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get right there. All right, I did look up this grouper, and I believe it's a baby snowy grouper, snowflake grouper. Let me uh, rinse it off here. Real good. Yeah, you can see barely, it's barely got some uh, white uh, spots on it. And so um, I think it's a snowy grouper, just a baby version, and these are yellowtails. So this is the clean Ziploc bag that the fillets are going to go in. And these are the bags that I'm gonna put the fish guts in because I am at a, a swimming beach here and I don't want to attract any sharks. Because since I've never filleted a grouper before, or should we cook him whole too? Nah, I wanna fillet him. Yeah, I'm glad I'm filleting this grouper because its skin is super thick. There we go, a nice little fillet. I mean, not giant, but. Nice little fillet. When they uh, when they get bigger, they start to get really thick, and so to catch a little juvenile one like this, he ain't got the thickness yet. This will be fun to do a taste test comparison, though. Which is better, grouper or snapper? I'm actually I have no idea what which fish is going to win this one. 
Yeah, clean little fillet there. First thing I'm gonna do with these snapper is scale them since we're cooking them whole. Uh, easy to scale. I love fish. Leg. I hate scale. Oh, look. Look at that. There's already. Did you just see that? There's a fish already coming up and eating the bits. Let's see if he comes back. What was that? Was that a jack? That might have been some sort of jack. And jack on the islands here are really good to eat. Oh, look, I see a little fish, some little sergeant major fish right there. There we go. I don't want to take any of the guts or the head or anything and throw it out there. Now I'm just going to cut the tail off. There we go. Do the same thing to the other snapper. One thing I like about the rental I got is it came with this big heavy cutting board. It's super nice for cutting up big fish. Alright my friends, let's get to the cooking. It's hot out here. It gets really hot in the Caribbean. All right, my friends, got everything all set up for the cook. And I'm gonna do something brand new. I'm gonna make bread for the first time. This is called Festival Bread. It's a Jamaican thing. Jamaican invented it. And I have here a package from a subscriber, Matthew Wagner from Washington, Pasco. And I do not know what's in it. I've never opened it before, but this will be the seasoning. I'm guessing it's a bottle of seasoning because it feels like a bottle. This is what we will put on the fish. So he has his letter. Thank you, Matthew. And what do we got? Seafood, it's seafood seasoning. Look at this. Pike Pier Fisherman, all natural <laughs> seafood seasoning. Perfect, <laughs> excellent. That just turned out so excellent. I was like, whatever's in this, we're gonna use. He's 14 years old. He loves to fish with his family. Oh, he has a little uh, cook set up like I do. That's fun. Washington fishing. That's a good picture. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Matthew. All right. Festival bread going down. I'm liking the name. I uh, did have a practice session where I made it, and I probably just burnt the first piece. So hopefully this second round will turn out. How do you know how much to add? Uh, you just eyeball it. Like it's just, it's completely, you just add water to it. It's kind of like biscuit mix, just water in the flour. However you want to make it, whatever consistency. And if your hands aren't clean, you'll be baking or frying or whatever you do up, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It's always been a my rule. Food rule. <laughs> a home food rule. I don't think you'll get away with that in a restaurant. I heard that on the Food Network. Right? <laughs> I guess I wash my hands. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a big one. What kind of snake is? I guess maybe on a tropical island, I <laughs> just grabbing snakes, but he didn't look harmful. He didn't oh, look harmful. Wow. Dang. I really want to eat a snake. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a good. All right, a little lesson there, guys. <laughs> when you're on a tropical island and you see a snake, don't just grab snake. That uh, that could have probably turned out real bad. Wow. I figured he was harmless because they wouldn't allow poisonous snakes on the or venomous snakes on the property. <laughs> wouldn't allow. All right, I did go wash my hands really thoroughly. Yeah, don't just grab unknown snakes, ladies and gentlemen. I had no idea what that was. All right, so this is just some self rising flour. Sprinkle some of that on there. I have no idea what I'm doing with making bread. I, I mean, I have a little bit of an idea, very little idea. All right, let's grab this out of there. All right, so I gotta knead this first. Um, Knead it real good there, and then roll it up into a nice ball, and I'm gonna stick it back in the bowl, and then we gotta cover it with a damp cloth and let it rise for 15 minutes. So, while the bread is doing that, I am gonna cook the fish. Check, water. Check your so, arm here. <laughs> I think, let's see here folks, we may have to, yeah I only brought the small pan set up with me, travel light, so we're going to cut this in half. Now we cut some slits in each one. Ooh, I like the color. 
and it's a little like thicker chunkier, you know, it has uh, mm -hmm. thick chunks. It's not finely ground. That's what I'm looking for. It's not finely ground. Makes gives it a real nice color pop, you know, to the fish. Get some on the inside of the head there. And I'm just gonna give a splash of salt over the whole thing. Just a little. There we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of the flour out here, just a bit, and then let's add a little salt to it. And some of Matthew seasoning. Let's mix ourselves just a little concoction there. And we'll do a little taste test, you know, grouper versus snapper. And we'll roll the fillets in it, get them good and coated. This is fun. Sweet. All right, now let's come over here. Yeah, definitely hot enough. Let's see, let's cook snapper first. We're gonna do these kind of a, a naked fry, if you will. No batter on them, which I've done before, but it's just been a long time. I'm just gonna throw them whole in there like that. I always like to put on batter because it gives a nice crisp, but sometimes like with sea fish or whatever, you don't need it because the fish is so tasty. I think yellow tail snapper gonna be really, really tasty. Because my dad had a great idea. He said, why don't you just put that rest that flour dredge on these old pieces. I know I just said it's best, but just a little light. Just a little light. It's, you know. Try it. Sometimes, yeah, just try different things. Don't want it too heavy. You're not gonna double dip it or anything or put a real thick batter on it or anything like that. Yeah. One of the reasons why I got this is the picture stuck out to me. It has fish, like whole fried snapper, you know, which is what we're doing, with the bread on the side instead of like French fries. You know, in America we usually have fish and fry, fish and chips, fish and fries. And uh, they have like bread with their fish. Very close, but let's cook our grouper super fast. Man, this is gonna be so much fun to try grouper versus snapper. Never thought I'd be doing that. Did not plan that. In fact, I thought we were gonna do a tarpon catching cook, which is still on the list. I still gotta catch a tarpon before this trip is up. Now this should work out wonderfully where by the time we get done cooking, it'll be right about 15 minutes probably a little over 15 or 20 minutes and we can make the bread next. In fact, we're gonna put this in there. Let those dudes cook. Let's prepare everything for the bread. We're just gonna clear, since this is kind of flavored, now Festival is a, like a savory kind of bread, so it does not matter if it gets a few seasonings in it, but I don't want it to taste exactly like the fish. It's already flavored uh, flour, so all you do now is I'll just knead it a few more times and then I'm just gonna separate it out and you're supposed to roll it into sausage like pieces and flatten it and that's the general sh idea of shape we're gonna deep fry the bread in the same oil we cooked the fish in which is totally fine it's meant as the side for fish it ain't a uh, uh, I mean, gosh, you can make probably a really good fish sandwich, fried bread and fried fish. Ooh, mm, just thought of that. A little flip a do here. You can see how hot the oil is, because, like I said, when you're, when you're frying anything, but especially when you're kind of, like I said, naked frying, no flour or anything like that, you want it cooked really fast. His eyeball got cooked up good. You can try a fish eye if you want. Mm. Fried fish eye. Okay, bread now going in. There we go. I think we put two pieces per batch. Let that fry up real good. Splash the oil on it. Cool. Mmm, I love it. By the way, my friends, if you want to check out. I support the channel. I have a gr the great uh, Mahi Catch and Cook mug. Comes in a bunch of colors. We also have the trout mug, um, the octopus mug. My favorite. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. whole bunch of mugs, and, as well as shirts and stuff like that. So be sure to check out the merch store in the description. The last piece turned out kind of funny looking because of uh, that's not it's not burnt. It just picked up the burnt pieces from the bottom of the hole. These pieces turned out a lot better though. Look at that. Nice little pile of bread, and we got the fish, a nice seafood feast. All right, my friends, and there is oh, feast. 
Shall we pray real quick? Yes. <laughs> yes. Dear Lord, thank you so much uh, for all your creation that we had to enjoy and such an abundance here on this island especially. I see blessed food to our bodies now. Through Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. I think I'm going to go with the grouper first. Okay. We'll try grouper and we'll compare it with the schnapper. Ooh, right away it seems yeah, like meaty, it's really it? meaty, yeah, yes. No, Trying to poke into that. it was hard. All right, cheers. Sorry, I'm getting right through it. Ooh, very, like, steak-like. It's, it is. No, the flesh is very firm. The fish is not real fishy. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's just a good seafood mm -hmm. taste. It's not the big flavor burst, though, I was expecting. No, I, I, I enjoy it because mm -hmm. it's not real fishy. It's just a good firm flesh fish with a little bit of seafood flavor. Okay. So Let's try it compared with the snapper here. All right. Some uh, cheers. Which is better? Mm. For my money, the snapper. Yeah. Right. I would say pretty yeah. much finish right away. And that surprised me because I thought... Wow, well, yeah. I actually like the snapper be, better. Maybe the grouper's just just a little overcooked, maybe? Ah, maybe I overcooked it. Maybe That's that, why it's a little like uh, steak-like Yeah, it's than usual. very firm. It might just be the, the kind of grouper it is. But I don't know. The flavor of it, though, still, even if yeah, I made true. it a little tough, the, the snapper just has a better flavor to it. It does. So, it yeah, really I, does. I think snapper's the obvious winner. I'm glad we both came to the exact same conclusion. Mm -hmm. It's wow. light, flaky. I like the seasoning. Mm -hmm. I could use a little more on it, probably. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good seasoning, Matthew. Appreciate it. What I'm going to do is grab a bit of lettuce. I'm going to oh, break really? off a piece of... We'll divide it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab the last bit yeah. of my grouper. Guys, I really like lettuce wrap stuff. I'm not uh, vegan or anything. I just like lettuce wrap stuff. Cheers. Cheers. I just like grabbing a bit of fish with, uh, with lettuce. Mm -hmm. Try it. It's real good. It needs a bit of mayonnaise or something, a uh, coleslaw yeah, with it. That would but be good. Let's try the bread. I'm going to go for uh, this big chunk here. Cheers. Cheers. Smells cool. Great. Oh, man. That's really good. Mm. I, I can't believe you fried wow. it in the fish oil. Mm -hmm. But it, it has a sweet taste, but, a, but I can't taste any seafood in it. Yeah. This it's, is good. It's slightly sweet, but it's still a savory bread, though. I don't know how yeah, to explain it. It reminds me of sweet cornbread. Mm, exactly. Kind of that same idea of if you still have cornbread, you can eat it for the meal as a savory item, but if it's a sweet cornbread, it's still good. Mm -hmm. That's fun. That, that is, you, we should do this every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if uh, this kind of thing makes its way up into the U.S. where you just eat fried bread with your fried fish, I wouldn't mind at all. Mm -hmm. If folks in the Caribbean would like to enlighten me, what do you put on festival? Is there like... Seems like honey might be good on it, or maybe put some sort of jam or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me know, because it surprised me how many subscribers I have down here. You guys light up the comment section every time I use something from the Caribbean. So please let me know how you have this. I think we're going to make fish sandwiches out of it. So, well, it's been a fun last few days, my friends. Pops, glad you caught a couple of snapper there. Those were the best. Those were the best, definitely. Yeah. Guys, check out my chance, my dad's channel down in the description. He eats food as well. It's a little different. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.